This morning we want to talk about uh, diabetes. Yes. What exactly is, is it, Robert? Well, uh, essentially diabetes is a problem where your body is not regulating sugar properly mm -hmm. and to ex some extent it's also not regulating fat, but we tend to focus a lot more on the regulation of the sugar. Now, this is involved the release of insulin, as we might be familiar with, from, from produced by the pancreas, mm -hmm. and this insulin stimulates the cells through what we call insulin receptors to absorb the, the glucose. Now, the diabetes may result from either you're not producing enough insulin, which we usually refer to that as a type 1 type of diabetes, mm -hmm. Uh, the more common type, type 2, where the insulin is not responding. It is just the cells are not responding to the insulin, so that the insulin sensitivity is down and so on. So this, and this are, both of these conditions will obviously result in the glucose not being metabolized properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the incidence of this epidemic, of, of, this, um, right. of this disease in Jamaica compared to the global population? Well, um, Jamaica um, is, is quite high. Um, we, our, we have two figures. We have what we call the confirmed figures, um, which run somewhere about 6 to 7 percent. Mm -hmm. But um, more and more, 6 to 7, six to seven, six percent, to seven, seven percent, percent, percent of mm -hmm. the population. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at about 150, 200,000 persons are diagnosed. Mm -hmm. But it could be twice that, three times that base, because a lot of our of our people tend not to go to doctor and get yeah, checked up and so yeah. on, and they believe it could be up to three times this this level and such, which would be way above the world average. Yeah, way above the world average. And so why is that? Why is the world average is about how much? It's about seven percent. Seven percent. So why is that? Why, why is it that we, we the propensity for diabetes is well, here than in? Uh, again, um, the more we become metropolitan, more we become like the U.S. Uh, and we have that kind of lifestyle. I mean, U.S. is quite high. Um, the yeah. U.S. currently, you know, there are about four thousand new cases every day mm -hmm. and so on. And more we adapt that type of lifestyle, um, the more we are seeing it. And we see it worldwide. Um, the more the industrial type of white lifestyle is, is adapted, the greater the incidence and prevalence of that. What age group is the incidence? Is, um, well, um, when I was in medical school, we talk about um, type 2 diabetes coming on at age 40. And, I mean, that was what we were taught and so on. Now we've seen type 2 diabetes in teenagers wow. uh, and so on. So, I mean, the spectrum has changed a whole lot. Mm -hmm. what's, what's the danger of it and the symptoms of it? Okay. Um, essentially, because it, the sugar is sugar is high in the blood, um, the, the, the kidneys tries to regulate it uh, as a result because the hormone regulation is down, and as a result, the kidneys try to dump the sugar. Now, by dumping the sugar, it has to dump water with it. So the result is that the person will pass a lot of urine mm -hmm. and they become very thirsty uh, because the sugar is not around to be used by the cell. They obviously, they become very hungry and begin to lose weight and so on. So this is a typical presentation as such. Mm -hmm. Now, the sugar is interfering with a number of organ functions, and, and, and the key one is, is, is the heart. It, mm -hmm. it increases significantly the risk of cardio, cardiovascular disease. But it's also affecting vessels in other organs like mm -hmm. the brain, obviously increasing the risk of stroke and the kidneys causing kidney failure is probably the commonest cause of kidney, kidney failure locally. Um, and you probably see a lot of people with amputation because mm -hmm. of the poor circulation in the legs and they get ulcers and so on. So it, it, it's really a systemic disease. I mean, it's affecting all the organs and so on. So and it's clearly yeah. lifestyle related from what you say. Yes, saying. definitely it's lifestyle related. As I said, the more we become um, industrialized, the more we see in it. So it's, it is it's tied in with something that is going on in, in that lifestyle. Which means that in, 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 in dealing with it and combating it, um, the general mm -hmm. uh, line of march would be to mm -hmm. modify uh, lifestyle. That's, that's, that's correct, right. But mm -hmm. in addition to that, how does one come to grips with it? I mean, other than lifestyle changes. Well, I mean, the, the, the approach normally is, 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 you know, offering people diet, exercise, and, mm -hmm. and drug management, and so on. Um, drug management is probably the main stem, stay right now in medical management. Um, usually we usually put persons on oral medication, but usually after five to ten years, ten years they end up requiring insulin treatment or injectable mm -hmm. treatment. Mm -hmm. So what we are seeing is that. The the disease is progressing and despite um, medical intervention it is not getting any better um, some interesting figures if we look at um, the successful care of diabetics in say, the US in 1980 and compare it with the successful care in 2000 actually we are deteriorating um, we have a figure we, we have a test we call it hemoglobin a1c mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And if your hemoglobin A1s is less than 7%, we say that your, your care is satisfactory. Mm -hmm. Now, in 1980, we were looking at 45% satisfactory care. Mm -hmm. Now, in, in 2000, we're looking at, we were looking at 35%. Why? So, uh, <laughs> well, obviously, yeah, we're, 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 we're doing something wrong. <laughs> in, in, in modern in right, right. medical, right. uh, med medical right. sciences, I mean, why is it that it's right. worse? It should be getting set up. <laughs> I, I, I think part of it is because we've, we're focusing so much on intervention, like drug intervention. And, yeah. and we're not examining diet. Diet is being pushed to the side because we think mm -hmm. that this disease is irreversible, it is not curable. Uh, we think that um, it, is, it is due to eating too much sugar and so on. And we, we are actually addressing the wrong, the wrong well, thing. Well, let's talk a little bit about <laughs> that then because of the importance mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. The diet. What is the recommended diet both to prevent as well as to reduce the incidence of it? Right, the, the, the conventional approach is rec recommends that we, we eat in small portions mm -hmm. and we avoid um, high, ca um, high sugar um, foods. Which are what? Uh, well, things, that, obviously the, the commercial sugar which we use, um, you know, sucrose. Um, obviously, if you're having high, some people recommend uh, avoiding starchy foods, too, mm -hmm. what they call the high glycemic type of food, right. starchy foods, and so on. So, they have some categories that talk about low right. glycemic, starchy yam food, and, yam um, and so on. Mm -hmm. um, yam would be low or high? Um, yam is considered high, high yeah. glycemic, yeah. and so on. Mm -hmm. um, so, that is a kind of approach, the conventional approach. Uh, but, as I said, the, it is not working, and I think we need to re-examine that um, as such. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, but a little bit more on mm -hmm. the, I mean, is that heavy carbohydrate breakfast, or what sort of... Well, we, are, we, we have proposed a different approach, and this is what we are, our company has recommended. We have recommended persons to go on a, a diet we call the sabbatical diet, yeah. which involves you eating a heavy breakfast in the morning, and there's a reason behind it, a high carbohydrate breakfast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we kind of different from the, the basic conventional approach with diet. Uh, we also recommend that you fast one morning a week, mm -hmm. and, and there is scientific basis for this. Okay. So a heavy breakfast. A heavy breakfast, right. You're on a heavy breakfast. And, and the, the reason behind that is that if you understand the physiology of the, the human body, you realize why it's important to have a heavy carbohydrate breakfast. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's just backtrack a little. There's, there's, a, there's a drug we, we use often in treatment of people with um, arthritis, asthma, called steroids or prednisone. Yeah. Right? And yeah. uh, it's a common thing that often we put patients on these drugs for, for their, their, their condition. They develop diabetes. Mm -hmm. So obviously steroids are causing diabetes, and mm -hmm. that, that's a well-established thing um, in medical science. Right? But we also produce our own steroids. Uh, mm -hmm. Steroids are, is a natural producing product, and mm -hmm. every 8 o'clock in the morning, your steroids is at the highest point of okay. the day. Mm -hmm. Now, if your steroid is high and steroids cause um, diabetes, then it simply means that if you are not eating food in the morning to protect those insulin receptors from mm -hmm. the high level of steroids, you are exposing yourself mm -hmm. to the result of the effects of steroids. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we are seeing diabetes occurring more often is that we are moving away from eating heavy in the morning. Most people are rushing to work. Yeah, coffee, 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 coffee and, and toast. toast and, coffee. And, and, and so, on. Oh. so what you are doing, you are exposing your, your body to this high level of steroid. And steroid uh, is what we call a destructive hormone. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 it tends to break down your tissue, including your insulin mm -hmm. regulatory mm -hmm. tissues, and so on. So by not eating heavy in the morning, you are literally exposing your body oh, to this damage. And no, <laughs> I've, been, I've been eating heavy, but on, on fruit. No, fruit. that's not good enough. <laughs> well, the fruit is half of it. You know, you'll get a lot of um, sucrose from the fruit, but you also want to increase your starch intake. So you want a breakfast that is sweet and starchy. So you have the sweet component there, mm -hmm. where you need to add some starch, which is the yam and banana and so on, now, to get that, that, that element. Because in fact, we have two essentially two types of insulin mm -hmm. and it's very important that you get both insulin out you have what we call the short acting insulin mm -hmm. which is which is which, which responds to the sweet sweet stuff and you have a long acting insulin that responds to the starchy stuff mm -hmm. so you want both insulin out protecting your insulin receptors from this high level of steroids in the morning mm -hmm. so as a result you don't get the deterioration of the um, the, ins the sugar regulatory system mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and of course the fasting once a week what's, right. what's that okay that? no as, as I pointed out steroids destroys insulin receptors now, if, if you think about it, every day you are using these insulin receptors, so there are going to be wear and tear going on and so on. So it's not surprising that after a while some of these receptors are not working good. So you must have a program that is, is removing them periodically so that new ones can come in and so on. So this is why we fast one day a week. You fast on that day, you allow the destruction to occur. And so destruction is not bad. Mm -hmm. It's just uncontrolled destruction that is bad. So on the fast day, you literally do some destruction, get rid of a few of those old, old parts and so on. And then you 
protect what is left and allow the opportunity for for, for a regeneration of um, new parts and so on. So you, yeah. there's a constant turnover, and, and this is what we do with with everything else. You have to do with your house, your car. There must be a maintenance program. So mm -hmm. it's not only saying that the structure is bad, but if you are destroyed every day, then obviously you're going to run into a problem, right?